I saw the new Lee Wynell remake of The Invisible Woman. Ah, God damn it. It's, uh... Wait, you need to do that again. I barely, or unless you got yeah. that whole recording, I, I heard like... Chubby. No, Tommy, I didn't get the recording on my end. I got to redo that. <laughs> All right, yeah, but you don't know what the fuck I said, so I will redo I had no idea what you said. Yeah. I heard Lee Hawahini, Invisible Man. That's pretty much it. Uh, all right, you want to lead me into it one more time? Sorry. Last time. Here we go. Third time's a charm. Hey, Adam, what did you see this week? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Movie Toast Movie Reviews. This is Adam. This week, I'm joined with Dennis. Hey, guys. How's it going? And my always trusty sidekick, Tommy. Sidekick? All the right. Fuck? Co-host. <laughs> Uh, how you guys doing this I week? Ain't no fucking sidekick, you understand? Jesus, <laughs> Mary and Joseph. Uh, you're Joseph. the star of the show, Tommy. You're the no, star. You're the I'm star. not the star in any way, <laughs> shape, or form, but I am not a sidekick. All right, so you guys see any movies this week? Yes, sir. Yes. Who, who wants to start us off? I'll go first. Um, because I only saw I only saw the one movie uh, that oh. was new new for me. So okay. I got around to watching The Green Inferno for the first time on Ooh. Netflix. Ooh. Um, thought it would be fun just to add some kind of crazy horror movie to my watch list, and boy, that was a that was a time. Um, I'm going to start saying. off. I'm going to start off saying this is a red light. All around. <laughs> um, Do you want to give? Was, uh, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, directed by Eli Roth, uh, had an estimated budget of about five million dollars. Um, the worldwide gross is currently twelve million. Um, the the film reflects it. The acting is this the one about that rainforest thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, here, here's the. Sorry, I got, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's the story. I haven't the plot seen of the this movie one. is there's a group of college students who, um, they're like they're kind of they feign polit- political activism. They find out about this whole. There's this group of villagers in the Amazon who are being threatened by a logging company. This logging company is going to come supposedly come and just shoot up all the villagers. So these kids are like, no, no, we got to stop them. Um, they organize this whole protest. They chain themselves to trees and bulldozers down, down in the Amazon. There's a, there's a few moments. Cause like, let's be honest, we know what we're getting invested into. There's a few moments that kind of lead you to think, Oh, it's about to crack off over halfway through the fucking movie before we finally get to see some cannibals. Oh, oh my God. It I don't know. I, I liked it once they started getting in the cage. Once they were captured, I kind of liked it a little like, bit. There's a, there's a handful of moments. The biggest one, when the first guy gets killed, and this, I mean, you see a homie get mutilated. Um, and it's, it's intense. But that was probably the most brutal part. Then it just gets fucking weird. You get to see Spy Kid Dick. The guy that plays Junie, I forgot his... The actor's name. Uh, Isn't it like Daryl Sabaro or something weird like oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is something like that. You see a lot more of him than I ever wanted to. They've got stupid fart and poop jokes, and weed is a part of the plot of Escape somehow, and it's really terrible. And oh no, you don't want to give a bunch of cannibals munchies. Guess what happens? What happens? <laughs> oh, bye bye, weird. monkeys. <laughs> uh, uh, bye bye university students there was almost no redeeming qualities to it for me other than th- there's a few shocking scenes and then there's some gorgeous footage of the rainforest turns out they filmed it in chile but it was yeah it was interesting i don't i don't regret watching it at all it no. was an educational experience um now you can say you've seen it yeah <laughs> now, now he's making a video game movie so the tagline yeah. no good deed goes unpunished <laughs> pretty good tagline <laughs> All right. Yeah. Red light for me. Yeah. Adam. So, Tommy. You see? Yeah, I'll start off with the first movie I saw. That's a good place to start, Adam. This week, I saw the Lee Wynell remake of The Invisible Man, starring Elizabeth Moss. Okay. Yeah. You want to so, give us a little uh, insight on, for those that haven't seen the movie, what it's about? Yeah, I, was, I was curious about this one. She's running away from her husband. Her husband is abusive. And she ends up getting away, and she's staying at a friend's house who's a cop. And she's just paranoid. We pick up like two weeks later. She's paranoid that her husband's going to find her and he's going to fuck with her because he always said, if you ever leave me, I will find you. I'll be in front of you and you won't even know I'm there. And she's just paranoid. And everyone's like, you're crazy. And then a couple of days later, her sister comes to her and says, you don't got to worry anymore. He's dead. And she's like, okay, cool. And then strange little things start happening around the house. 
that she's staying in and all around her. And she's like, oh, shit, he's here. He's he's here. He's messing with me. He's trying to get to me. And she's trying to convince people, and she's freaking out the whole time. And it's like, maybe she is kind of crazy. Maybe she's not crazy. Makes question. you question. Yeah. It makes me question. Yeah, I got a question. So you said that he threatened her if she ever left him. Yes. Then he'll be in front of her and, and she won't even know it or something yeah. like that. Something. Yeah. But didn't he like kill Yeah, he himself? killed and himself. So he left her. So why is he still fucking with her? Well, that's the thing. That's why everyone's like, there's no way he's doing this to you. He's dead. Uh, we have yeah. pictures of his dead body. His brother has his urn. He was like a tech mogul. He had millions of dollars. And he left it all to her and said, hey, you can have this money as long as you don't get arrested or something crazy happens to you. Right, right. Is it possible he's trying to control that he, her like, that he even when he's it? gone? Yes, that's what she's thinking. But everyone's like, that's that's impossible. And that he to make it so that she doesn't get all his money. Yeah, it's essentially, yes. So things happen and it's like, hey, wait a second. People here should know she's not doing this. But it's a movie, so you can look past that. But it's really, really good. And then the end, when you find out what happens, is like, oh, shit. Wow, that's interesting. I'd say it's a green light. Oh, cool. Okay, nice. So I saw that after work on Friday night. And then I said, hey, I'm going to go check out this French movie that's playing like right after that movie called Portrait of a Woman on Fire. I'm not even going to set it up because I only saw three or four minutes of it and I left. So I'm <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So I'm sitting in this theater, which is a uh, dine-in AMC theater. So there's a kitchen right next door. They bring the food in and out. People order at their seats. I never order because I'm not going to pay overpriced prices for food. But I'm sitting there eating a bunch of crunch because Corey talked about it weeks ago. And I'm like, I want, I want I some bunch crunch. I didn't know what it was. And I had no idea what it was. And you know what? It's not very good. It sucks. I don't know why Corey always <laughs> eats it. But to each their own. It literally tastes like cardboard covered in light chocolate. Oh. I, I thought I liked <laughs> it as a kid. I don't. Yeah. So di dibs is way better than bunch of crunch. Oh, yeah. And I don't even like dibs. But I will say it's better than bunch of crunch. So I'm sitting there. I just opened a bunch of crunch. The movie started. I'm like, all right, cool. And then my eyes kind of divert down to the ground in front of me. And I see something. I'm like, well, what's that? And I'm like, oh, that is a mouse. That's kind of weird. What do I do here? I, I want to watch this movie, but I don't want to sit here. There's a mouse. But all right, fine. All right, it's scurried away. Cool, whatever. And I look back up the screen, and I look you down again. A fucking another mouse. And I'm like, what the fuck Different? is this? Uh Oh yeah, and we're in a theater right yeah. next door to the kitchen. In the fuck out of it, like nope. Oh, yeah, and I'm like, man. should I pull out my phone and take a Bruh. video? Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, it's gonna be dark. People might think I'm trying to record the movie, so I just go to the box office. I'm like, hey, I don't want to alarm you, but theater five, I saw two mice scurrying along in like one minute, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll let my manager know. Oh, that's gonna <laughs> happen. They know. They and know. I'm like, yep, exactly. I'm like, they fucking know this is happening. This is easily a health violation. Back. So, Would I mean, you like I, a coupon for a free hot dog? No, they didn't offer me <laughs> shit. I would totally eat the food that comes out of their kitchen. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. So I'm like, fuck it. I almost well, we had the and, We had the mice taste test the hot dogs first before, <laughs> just to make sure that you guys are going to like them. No, literally, you know, they're just a theater ratatouille people. They got the uh, mice. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going back to the theater, and I'm like, no, I'm not fucking watching a movie in this theater. That's uh, what, that, No, fuck that. So I walk out, and I call the 800 number, and like someone's like, okay yep all right i'm like so can you give me a refund i i just purchased it on the app can you just reverse it well uh did the movie already start yeah i was three minutes into the movie well we can't do that i i can take your information and have the uh manager give you a call back i'm like well you can't do anything for me your customer service there's a health violation here and you can't do anything for me no no well the city or the state and just be like Fucking light them up. Yeah, yeah. so I, I tweeted at them uh, all that, and then I, I put in the Board of Health of, like, Boston or Massachusetts. Oh, shit. And then, like, a customer service rep is like, here, direct message me, and we can talk about this. I'm like, here's what happened. Well, you want me to take your info so the manager can call? No, the, the person on the phone claimed they were going to do that. This is two, three days later at this point, no call. And I'm like, I'm going to try to write an email to the Board of Health because I'm like, hey, the oh, theater's my, nice, yeah, but when nobody gives a fuck about the fact that there's mice running around and people were ordering food because I saw waiters coming and going and I'm like, ah. I felt weird. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's see nasty. that movie. Yeah. 
we put them on blast. Are you gonna say? Will you, will you say the name of the theater chain out loud? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It. it's it's uh the AMC Framingham. I don't know <laughs> dine in theater. Yeah, because oh. I know we got a lot of listeners who go there. I don't know. If hey, you never there. know. You yeah. never know. Look out, AMC Framingham. You just got blasted. Yeah, yeah. you got movie toast, bitch. Uh, so yeah, It'll that. Burn. I, I don't really want to see my see movies with Mickey Mouse next to me on my shoulder, okay? <laughs> oh, man, I it just felt so gross. Now I'm like, oh, man, what if one got in my jacket or crawled on me? And Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, it's like, this is weird. So normally I won't bitch about stuff. I, I'll sit through it and just be So mad. are you going to go see that movie, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, somewhere else? Well, that's the thing. It's only playing at that AMC theater right oh, now. Oh, no. So I'm like, I'm like, no way in hell they, like, called an exterminator and did anything in the past two days so i'm gonna wait to see if it comes to another oh, theater. For sure. yeah. <laughs> so yeah the sad part is i wanted to see two movies at this theater and i don't know when the hell i'm gonna go back because oh, don't i don't know how long would you guys wait at a uh, to go back to a most infested food kitchen cinema that's supposed to i gotta not- forget i would have to forget it even fucking yeah. happened like, yep. I would just say, you know what? I will wait and watch it at home. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Speaking yeah. of so watching at home, I rented a movie starring Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving. She looks kind of like Margot Robbie. She was in that movie, uh, Ready or Not. She's in a bunch of things. She's a really good actress. But this movie was called Guns Akimbo. Um, we watched oh, a trailer yeah. for it a little while back. Yeah. Uh, pretty much there is this kind of like underground video game but it's not a video game it's like people killing people and there's like drones and videos of it all throughout the internet and daniel radcliffe is a peaceful non-violent guy but when he goes home he likes to watch the videos and then troll the trolls and one night he goes too far and (laughs) these people get his ip address and break into his house knock him out and then literally drill guns into his hands oh my god i see a picture of it on imdb of him with yeah. his hands like this and they're bolted and like uh, oh my god and the first couple of minutes it's him trying to figure out how to do anything like yeah. how to get his inhaler how he can get pants on how how to get out of the apartment right yeah yeah that was in the trailer then there is this one girl who's been on a killing spree and everyone's rooting for her and uh she has to kill him and he's like whoa, whoa i don't want to fight and wow. he ends up escaping from her and then he tries to go to cops, and he's like, hey, I need help. And, of course, they see this guy waving guns in his hands. Guns in his hands, yeah. <laughs> so he then runs from them, and then he kind of accidentally shoots a cop. And then, uh, like, he just goes on this weird quest of trying to survive. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm going to say it's a yellow light because it's fun. It's funny. I wouldn't okay. say you need to go to the theater to see it. It's funny that you said the whole Margot Robbie thing because whenever I see the poster, the movie poster for Ready or Not, I always think it's Margot Robbie in the front of the poster. And oh yeah, a lot of her. people get her confused. So I'm like, I'll just say that. But she's in it another great like movie. Fuck, it's called Mayhem. It's kind of like a better version of that movie that was written by James Gunn. Uh, in the, yeah. It's at an office where you're going to kill people. It's got I've, that guy from Walking Dead in it. Yeah, Stephen, yeah, Stephen Young. Stephen Young. It's a really great movie. That's the first time I saw her. And I'm like, fuck, this lady's really good. And then she's in a Netflix movie called The Babysitter, which is really good. So everything I've seen this lady and she's really good, but she's unrecognizable in this movie because she's like kind of tatted up, no makeup and just like a badass. And it's almost kind of cartoony. Like she has a rocket launcher. She has like a fucking turret gun. Like she has all (laughs) these like crazy weapons. It's like, where the fuck is she getting this? But I'm on board. I'll be completely honest. When I saw the trailer and then after you talking about it, the whole guns being bolted to his hands and trying to figure out how to open the door and do regular things. For some reason, it reminds me of yeah. Edward Forty Hands. Yeah. yeah. And they can't, all they have is the 40s. They can't do anything. They can't open doors. They can't go use a bathroom. Like, until Oh, yeah. They- and the best one is he's trying to figure out how to piss and he's like trying to hold his <laughs> dick and he's like, and he misses, but he's like, all right, it's oh. okay. Just don't shoot your dick. Don't shoot your dick. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, I want to so, see. I want to hear him with an American accent. I'm. I. He probably. They probably had that in the trailer, and I didn't even realize it. But uh, yeah, if you guys get a chance, I. I bet it'll be on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon in a couple of months. And it's only an hour thirty-five. Yeah, it's a I've quick been, watch. I'll, I. I love. I don't know what it is, but the two-hour movies now are starting to take a toll on me. I really enjoy the hour thirty-five, hour forty minutes. Yeah, it's the perfect sweet spot. Like I saw an article the other day saying. Uh, the new 007 
is going to be the longest running one. And like when fucking all the new Star Wars come out, they're like, this is the longest running one. It's like, why? What? We don't need that. Yeah. Well, th- that's another reason why I never, I have not seen The Irishman in full. Oh, my it's brother like, watched it recently. He's like, I wasted movie. four hours of my life. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's too long sucks. of a movie. I can't, I, I'll be asleep after the first hour. <laughs> yeah. I know some people have seen it in theaters like twice. I'm like, I can't even watch it on my couch once. How? Yeah. But. All right. So, yeah, so Tommy, yeah. what have you seen? Wait, didn't you have another oh. movie or was that it? No, that's it. That's sadly it. This All week. right. So it's, up to, it's my turn. Yes, sir. I have four movies. Corey, do you hear that? I know you're listening to this recording. I have four movies to review. I will say the first movie was a homework assignment from you guys that you gave to me, and I watched it earlier today on Disney+. Plus. And I'm talking about the 1998 Disney cartoon classic called Mulan. I went back and listened to the episode you put up, and I still don't get the reference that you <laughs> guys are saying. You said something to me, and you're like, oh, he doesn't get it. I Let's watched get down the to movie. business. I don't. I, who said that? It, it's in the song. The Look, there's a whole song. Let's get down to business. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. Hold on. I, let me let me say. I skip past all the all the the songs. The songs well, are the best part of the movie. The, you know, there's plot in the songs, right? I didn't like, think there was, and I wanted to watch the movie as fast as possible because oh it was my almost God. time to record. The so, songs so were, I was Tommy watched some of Mulan. <laughs> is what I'm hearing. So the live action, there's not going to be any M- Mushu. No, no, Eddie Murphy. No, that's fine. <laughs> and well, and there's going to be... I, I, I could see them making a live action. As I'm watching this, I'm like, okay, I can see that scene being in a live action. I can see that scene being in a live action. There's a lot of, like, comedy jokes. Yeah. Like, little stuff there that only works in an animated And movie. that's why I think we're not going to see any of that. That's why I feel yep. like this it's is going to be... It's going to be a really dark movie. It's going to be, yeah. Or I feel like it's more um, based in realism, I think, is a... Um, Without trying to scare away any particular audience, uh, ground more in reality and trying to rent a little bit more. You think there's going to be any comedy in it? I bet there'll be some, but not some. much. But yeah, it's not. It's not going to be near anywhere near the level of the animated film. I oh. would bet on that. My favorite character was Mulan's grandma. Yeah, she was awesome. She's yeah. great. I don't think they're going to find. Uh, you know who they got? Uh, I guess it's already cast and shot and everything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it comes out at the yep. end of the month, yeah. Oh, uh, damn. I, I was thinking like they were going to have like Jackie Chan or uh, uh, Jet Li or some some action stars in it. Jet Li's the emperor, I believe. Wow. Oh, is he? Oh, okay, okay. No, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I liked the movie. Maybe I'll have to go back and rewatch it with the songs. I don't know. But um, the plot, I, I could totally see this being an action uh, movie. You know, it makes sense that she she's trying to bring honor to the family, and in doing so, she dishonors her father. And basically, it's uh, oh my! I think the best line that sums it up was when she said, uh, "You trusted me as Ping, so why should Mulan be any different?" Yeah, I think that's a the line sums up the whole movie perfectly. Oh it's yeah. Like, would you see the live action one or not really interested? Actually, now that I've seen the animated, I would. I, I, I before no, you couldn't pay for my movie ticket, I wasn't going to go see it. Now, I'll probably go see it. Now, what did nice. you think oh, cool. about the movie before you saw it? What did you were you just like, eh, it's a lady in the army kind of thing? Or, yeah, it was that's exactly what I thought it was a lady going to fight in the Chinese army. I didn't know anything about that. They they recalled her father to, to come in and fight, and he was too old or or hurt he got a hurt leg and so she goes and takes a spot to bring honor to the family i didn't know any of that stuff yeah i just thought it was oh she's a female that's really good at fighting and wants to go in and fight and prove that she belongs and i was kind of half right but there was a lot more to it a lot Mm -hmm. more to it and i really liked it the second movie this is a very important movie because it it's five years old came out in 2015 um it had very, very mixed reviews. The gamer in me really liked this movie. But oh. for some reason, out of 125,000 votes on IMDb, it got a 5.5 out of 10. And it's an Adam Sandler movie. Pixels, I rewatched it. I liked it then. And I liked it even more this time. I don't think it's a bad movie. I wanted to pick it apart and look for problems in the movie. 
There are none. See, but that's the thing. People tend to watch movies and they're like, what can I shit on? And you're right. If you're just let go of reality, it's a fun movie where Adam Sandler's a plumber yeah. and Kevin James is the president and they got to stop <laughs> and- video games from their childhood coming to life and Josh Gad's going to fuck and marry Hubert. But if it's a good movie, past, honestly. If, if you get past the outlandish ideas of, oh, Kevin James is the president, really, really. But that's the and thing. It's like people that Adam you Sandler's know and love. Plumber. He's a tech guy. Okay, my bad. The CGI, the special effects in the movie are cool. You got the little cubes. Those mm-hmm. things are really cool. If I was in that world and I saw one of those cubes on the ground, I'd pick it up. I'd save it. I'd keep it in a collection. They look really cool. And the, the games, they're bringing back old school games. And you see there, there's a scene where the Adam Sandler is talking to the kid and the kid's playing like a zombie movie or, or a zombie video game or something like that. And Adam Sandler's trying to explain to him, like, there's no patterns. Like, the whole point of the old games is there. You, once you figured out the patterns, you, you were good at the game. And you had to figure out the patterns and this and that. And the kid's trying to explain to him that's not how video games are now. It's, but, yeah, a good movie. Good movie then, good movie now. It deserves more. I'm going to rate it right now. It deserves more than a 5.5 out of 10 on IMDb. The premise of the movie, if, if you guys haven't seen it yet, or, and you're reserved, you're like, I don't want to see it. It's gotten really bad reviews. I've never wanted to see it. Well, the movie's about aliens that misinterpret a video feed of a classic arcade uh, tournament that they, they sent, N- NASA sent into space. And they, in t- the aliens misinterpreted that video as a declaration of war. And so they attack Earth as the games that were sent out, like Centipede, and Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and all this stuff. And Earth has three chances to defeat the aliens or the aliens will destroy the Earth. The finale is after Earth, spoiler, after Earth loses, the the head, the, the king of the aliens or whatever, the, the leader, decides to give him one more chance. They want to meet Adam Sandler's character. And they bring him up and he the leader turns into Donkey Kong because that was supposed to be like Adam Sandler's uh, Achilles heel was that he couldn't he wasn't the best of the best at Donkey Kong that was the one game that he wasn't good at but then it turns out he really was good at it because the other guy cheated and yeah I don't know, it's really nostalgic I like it a lot nice you should check it out Dennis have you seen this I assume you haven't or have nope. you? I, I, and I you're gotta never admit, gonna see I'm, it are you I'm not being sold I don't know <laughs> man it's is just, it is it the cast is it the it, silliness it, is it Maybe a little bit of everything. It's. I guess I'm just kind of left scratching my head. Like, why do I want to see that happen? Like, and especially when you're the explanation of the plot of them. What? They, so the aliens are attacking using the means that they were shown on a video. Yeah. So because they thought that's what to the strengths of what it appears the Earth has been preparing for. Yes. Essentially. So yes. what? Why? <laughs> like what? Because if they if they can defeat Earth at their best which is what the video was supposedly interpreted as. Okay. And they belong on Earth, not us. That's how I interpreted it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah, I don't well, know. It's one of the, if, if it was already playing in front of me, maybe I'd, I'd check it out. But Are you, are I, you a big fan of Adam Sandler? I, I like Adam Sandler. I this like is Josh a good Dan. Adam Sandler movie. I like Kevin movie. James. Honestly, kind of sound like they're each their own movie. I'm just watching a movie about Kevin James being the president of the United States. Period. <laughs> that done. Like I am there for I'll, that. I'll tell uh, you the the it, the chemistry between Kevin James, Adam Sandler, and Josh Gad. When you mix in, uh, what's his name from uh, Game of Thrones? Yeah. Okay. Peter I Dinklage. was going to say, isn't Dinklage? Peter, yeah. Peter Dinklage is in it. Oh, that's right. That's right. And yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're, they're all some, great. Like they're yeah. um, they're great actors. Don't get me wrong. No, it's actually nothing against them individually. It's right, 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 right. These, you know, this this particular chili doesn't look appetizing to me. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. All the All components, right. fine. Well, and, I mean, and then you have people like uh, Brian Cox plays an admiral. Sean Bean makes an appearance. Dan Aykroyd's in the movie, and uh, it even has Dennis Akiyama who plays. A very, very believable Professor Iwatani, the creator of Pac Man. Oh, I thought that was really him, no? I, right? No, oh. it's not. It's really not him, but he That's plays just such racist a racist gr- of me, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean, it's it's a really good cast. 
And yeah, the, but the cast isn't Dennis's problem. It's the synopsis. I know, I know. I know. So let's. Uh, what's what's your next movie, Tommy? All right. So I had two more movies. One was from 1985. One was from 1986. Uh, we'll go with 1985 first. Uh, so I this one I could not find on uh, Dish. I couldn't find it on Netflix. Could not find it on uh, Amazon Prime. Well, I could find it on Amazon Prime, but you had to buy it. You couldn't rent it. So I ended up going on Google Play for this one. Cool. And this is one of those ones I had to seek out because I just, you know, when you get a, an itch, you want to see a movie and you can't find it, you'll, you'll go through any length to see this movie. Well, I went through any length. It was like, it was kind of like my own big adventure. Oh, but <laughs> oh I see. I about, see where you're going with this. <laughs> I'm talking about 1985 cult classic Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh, I've seen that, I uh, pick a number and that's close to how many times I've seen it. Uh, it's, uh, it holds up even to this day. I think a lot of it had to do with me watching, um, some recent interviews with Paul Rubens about his 35th anniversary, uh, of the, of he's got, he's on like a tour. Yeah. I was going to say, did you know that's coming out? He, he go, he's going around to all these different, uh, theaters and he's showing, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and then he's doing not a and a because he doesn't care about the audience's questions. He's just basically answering questions that he's received over the years. And you get to see Pee Wee's Big Adventure with Pee Wee Herman. Really? Yeah. Like, that's worth it, but it's sold out. And they've it's... added, like, thousands of more, thousands more theaters across the United States. Yeah, it's coming out here at the end of the month. I'm like, I kind of want to go, but I don't you know. You should if I... definitely yeah. go and then, like, live stream the event. Mm-hmm. I was telling well, Dennis back in October, I saw him do a Q and a at the uh, New York comic con and just listening to his stories is really kind of oh, cool. It's great. Like, Oh, uh, well, uh, more importantly, how he came up with Pee Wee Herman. Uh, and then like in the big adventure, all the stuff that you see that's his is like all his own personal stuff. And huh. so it, I, it's, it, it held up and it was not only that it was Tim Burton's, directorial first, debut first feature yeah first yep <laughs> there's so much so many scenes in this movie that are like screaming this is tim burton it's crazy mm-hmm. and it was danny elfman's first time doing a soundtrack for a movie one of many over the years huh. but great movie cool. still holds up today it, it's one of those ones that if you can get past how crazy the plot is like it's really not a bad movie yeah i liked it nice so the next movie uh, that I watched, the last one I'm going to be talking about, and I can wrap this up in in a short amount of time, uh, Flight of the Navigator, 1986, uh, uh, stars Joey Kramer as David Freeman, and it has Paul Rubens, who play, he's credited as Paul Maul. He's not credited as Paul Rubens. He's the voice of Max, the robot in the, uh, the, the flying oh. saucer. And the reason they did that is because he didn't want the uh, fame of Pee Wee Herman getting in the way. He wanted to be a se- he wanted it to be a secret, especially because they kind of mask his voice with like a robotic synthesizer kind of thing. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious though when you hear Max in the movie and he's doing the famous Pee Wee Herman laugh that I used to be able to do really well, and I'm not even going to try it now. Boy travels in the future and has an adventure with an intelligent, wisecracking alien ship. All right. And- Really good movie. If you have it's like family adventure movie. I I actually know nothing about. I've I've heard references to it, but never seen it before. I'm with it's you on that. Disney, it's on Disney Plus, but Disney Plus has actually been pushing it on me like a lot lately. <laughs> I, I, so you do have Disney Plus? Yes. I recommend checking it out. It's it's an hour, uh, hour and thirty minutes, and really, there's nothing, uh, nothing wrong with the movie. It's I mean, it's dated. It's it was back in the late eighties, mid to late eighties. I mean, it's it's a good movie. It's uh, cool. I don't think you would get mad at yourself for watching it. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. All right. Cool. Yeah. And oh, that was interesting about Pee Wee Herman with his movie. Uh, so him and Phil Hartman and one other guy uh, were all the writers for Pee Wee's Big Adventure. They knew nothing about writing scripts, so they actually looked or checked out a book from the library on how to write scripts. And so the cool thing about the script, the final script for Pee Wee's Big Adventure is the, people use that script in screenwriting classes to show how the script, because it's exactly one hour and 30 minutes, 90 minutes long. The script is 90 pages. 
the first act ends on the 30th page. The second act ends on the 60th yeah. page. And it's like the, the, the inciting incident happens within the first three pages, three to six pages. Uh, just, just like you learn in when you're taking a screenwriting nice. writing class. It and just so captures this, the, the correct formula. But uh, yeah, nice. so check out Peebles Big Adventure. Check out Fly the Navigator. I recommend those movies. So I think that's going to bring us to the end of this episode, guys. Anything uh, you want to say before we head off into the abyss? It's been a lovely evening with you gentlemen, <laughs> as always. Do you guys have any other homework assignment for me for this upcoming week on Disney Plus? Rewatch I, Mulan with the with the songs. I'd suggest <laughs> Lilo and Stitch if you want a heartwarming story oh, about sister. That's a good. That's is a it good really good? It is. I I watched it a couple of weeks back, and it still holds up. It's one of my favorite Disney movies. All right, so I won't be seen as like an older creepy guy watching a little kids movie. No. I think especially there's a lot of people around our age that are big fans of the movie. It's like yeah. I, I feel like you're you're gonna finally get in on the you okay. know. And though I didn't catch the one from <laughs> Mulan that you made last week. Well, that's because you didn't fully watch the movie. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't watch the song. Watch <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, all right, gentlemen. I guess we'll let the audience go. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Snoochie boochies. <laughs> <laughs>